You are always in the process of creating every moment, every minute, every day. You are a big creation machine. And you are turning out a new manifestation literally as fast as you can think. Events, occurrences, happenings, conditions, circumstances, all are created out of consciousness. Individual consciousness is powerful enough. Can you imagine what kind of creative energy is unleashed whenever two or more are gathered in my name? And mass consciousness, why that is so powerful it can create events and circumstances of worldwide and planetary consequences. You are not choosing events or consequences. You are observing them and then deciding who you are in regard to them. So there are no victims in the world and no villains and neither are you a victim of the choices of others. At some level, you have all created that which you detest and having created it, you have chosen it. For it is only when they can accept responsibility for all of it that they can achieve the power to change part of it. So long as you entertain the notion that there is something or someone else out there doing it to you, you disempower yourself to do anything about it. Only when you say, I did this, can you find the power to change it. It is much easier to change what you are doing than to change what another is doing. The first step in changing anything is to know and accept what you have chosen it to be. And knowing that you have chosen it to be exactly what it is. Seek then to create change, not because a thing is wrong, but because it no longer makes an accurate statement of who you are. There is only one reason to do anything as a statement to the universe of who you are. Used in this way, life becomes self-creative. You use life to create yourself as who you are and who you've always wanted to be. There is also only one reason to undo anything because it is no longer a statement of who you want to be. It does not reflect you. It does not represent you. If you wish to be accurately represented, you must work to change anything in your life which is not fit into the picture of you that you wish to project into eternity. In the largest sense, all the bad things that happen are of your choosing. The mistake is not in choosing them, but in calling them bad. For in calling them bad, you call yourself bad, since you created them. And this label you cannot accept. So rather than label yourself bad, you disown your own creations. It is this intellectual and spiritual dishonesty which lets you accept the world in which conditions are as they are. If you had to accept personal responsibility for the world, it would be a far different place. This would certainly be true if everyone felt responsible. Events occur in the universe which no stretch of the imagination could claim you instigated or created. These events are created by the combined consciousness of man. All of the world co-creating together produces these experiences. What each of you do individually is move through them deciding what, if anything, they mean to you and who and what you are in relationship to them. Thus you create collectively and individually the lives and times you are experiencing for the sole purpose of evolving. There is a less painful way to undergo this process, yet nothing in your outward experience will have changed. 
the way to reduce the pain which you associate with earthly experiences and events is to change the way you behold them. You cannot change the outer event. So you must change the inner experience. This is the road to mastery in living. Nothing is painful in and of itself. Pain is a result of wrong thought. It is an error in thinking. A master can disappear the most grievous pain in this way. The master heals. Pain results from a judgment you have made about a thing. Remove the judgment and the pain disappears. Judgment is often based upon previous experiences. Your idea about a thing derives from a prior idea about a thing. Your prior idea results from a still prior idea, and that idea from another, and so forth, like building blocks, until you get all the way back in the hall of mirrors to what I call first thought. All thought is creative, and no thought is more powerful than original thought. That is why this is sometimes also called original sin. Original sin is when your first thought about a thing is an error. The error is compounded many times over when you have a second or a third thought about a thing. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to inspire you to new understandings, which can free you from your mistakes. There are no shoulds or shouldn'ts in God's world. Do what you want to do. Do what reflects you, what represents you as a grander version of yourself. But judge not, and neither condemn. For you know not why a thing occurs, nor to what end. And remember this, that which you condemn will condemn you, and that which you judge you will one day become. Rather, seek to change those things which no longer reflect your highest sense of who you are. Yet bless all, for all is the creation of God, through life living. And that is the highest creation. Your greatest gift is the opportunity to do as you please and experience the result of that. The chance to create yourself anew in the image and likeness of who you really are. The space to produce a reality of a higher and higher you based on your grandest idea of what it is of which you are capable. To say that something, a thought, a word, or action is wrong would be as much as to tell you not to do it. To tell you not to do it would be to prohibit you. To prohibit you would be to restrict you, and to restrict you would be to deny the reality of who you really are, as well as the opportunity for you to create and experience that truth. I tell you this, you are your own rule maker. You set the guidelines, and you decide how well you have done and how well you are doing. For you are the one who has decided who and what you really are and who you want to be. And you are the only one who can assess how well you're doing. No one else will judge you ever. For why and how could God judge God's own creation and call it bad? If I wanted you to be and do everything perfectly, I would have left you in the state of total perfection from whence you came. The whole point of the process was for you to discover yourself and create yourself as you truly are and as you truly wish to be. Yet you could not be that unless you had a choice to be something else. Should I therefore punish you for making a choice that I myself have laid before you? If I did not want you to make that second choice, why would I create it? It may serve you, however, to be aware of consequences. Consequences are results, natural outcomes. These are not at all the same as retributions or punishments. Outcomes are simply that. They are what results from natural application of natural laws. 
They are that which occurs quite predictably as a consequence of what has already occurred. All physical life functions in accordance with natural laws. Once you remember these laws and apply them, you have mastered life at the physical level. You would never experience yourself as being in what you call trouble. You would not understand any life situation to be a problem. You would not encounter any circumstance with trepidation. You would put an end to all worry, doubt, and fear. You would have all the freedom, all the joy, all the peace, and all the wisdom, understanding, and power of the spirit you are. You would be a fully realized being. This is the goal of your soul. This is its purpose, to fully realize itself while in the body, to become the embodiment of all that it really is. This is my plan for you. This is my ideal, that I should become realized through you. Thus, concept is turned into experience, that I may know myself experientially. The laws of the universe are laws that I lay down. They are perfect laws, creating perfect function of the physical. Have you ever seen anything more perfect than a snowflake? Its intricacy, its design, its symmetry, its conformity to itself and originality from all else. All are a mystery. You wonder at this miracle of the awesome display of nature. Yet if I can do this with a single snowflake, what think you I can do? have done with the universe. Were you to see the symmetry of it, the perfection of its design, from the largest body to the smallest particle, you are not able to hold the truth of it in your reality. Even now, as you get glimpses of it, you cannot yet imagine or understand its, its implications. Yet you can know there are implications far more complex and far more extraordinary than your present comprehension can embrace. There are more things in heaven and earth than have been dreamt of in your philosophies. Begin by being still. Quiet the outer world so that the inner world might bring you sight. The insight is what you seek. Yet you cannot have it while you are so deeply concerned with your outer reality. Seek, therefore, to go within as much as possible. And when you are not going within, come from within as you deal with the outside world. If I do not go within, I go without. You have been going without all your life, 